What's up, y'all? Okay, first of all, I am chewing on this fucking mints. I love these mints, okay? Like, I got a bath. I like a, like a huge ass bin of them downstairs. Um, And I freaking love them. Okay, but why am I looking on the, um, the viewer on my computer? I'm looking at myself, like doing this video with you guys. Um, why does my face look all fat? Like, what the freak? Maybe it's the hairstyle. I don't know, but we have to just back up some. Okay. I don't know, but either way, you guys, welcome back. It's Real Talk Wednesday. Y'all already know what time it is. We can just dish the dish, talk the gossip, or spill the tea. Either way, it's Real Talk Wednesday, and it's your girl. Back in my little domain. Okay? Back in my fucking domain. So I'm happy to be home. Yes, I am damn sure happy to be home. I got to bring my mommy back with me, and I am so glad to be back. Um, and then I'm not because I do miss my husband, or now you guys want to know so much about the ring. We can talk about that later. But I do miss him a lot. So um, I do go back on the 2nd of May to New York because I'm not going to let my mom fly home by herself. So this was her very first time flying on a plane and she loved it. She was so happy with the experience. And I was so happy because she got to experience it with me. So we had a great time on our flight here and we've been having an amazing time since she's been here. I've taken her to the aquarium. Um, we've gone to the Dollar Tree because, you know, you guys know in New York City, your Dollar Trees is like, it's not that great. I mean, I'm not bragging. I'm from New York City too. Born and raised Queens. But, you know, being that there's so many people, they love to get shit and like just get shit. So you have to really be on the Dollar Tree. So we have like an abundance of them out here and she was so amazed with them. Took her to Walmart because, you know, in New York City, there's no Walmart, which sucks. Um, where else did we go? I took her to Westgate's Plaza. We've been just like so to so many places, you know what I'm saying? And I'm having like the time of my life. And so she is considering to move here. So you guys definitely, 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 you know, make her want to move here. Like leave your comments below. So that way she can read this video and she'll be like, okay, okay. Because she really does like it. She, like she loves the air. She says it's fresh air. She loves the sunshine. She said it's so bright outside. She loves the quietness. She loves the people. She said everybody here in Arizona is so nice. Like opposed to like the people in New York City. And I mean, like I can totally relate to her because I'm from New York City. So, you know, we do have attitudes and people do walk around with like they carrying boulders on their shoulders and shit. You know what I'm saying? So it's a different environment and she really does like it a lot here. So I'm glad that she likes it. And I'm just going to show her everything so that she just is like, oh, you know what? I'm going back. I told her that I would come and get her. We could have like a road trip, she and I, and she, she can move here and I'll bring all her stuff for her. So yes, I'm like really happy that she is enjoying herself. Okay. Um, so yesterday was it um, Monday? Cause you know, today is actually Tuesday when I do real talk, you know, me and my son was when we go to court. Cause I had to go to court for him. He's been, he's got this case that's been ongoing. Okay. Y'all, I told y'all these motherfuckers kids, boy, he's 19. So he had like this, I hope I'm coming in clear. Okay. So he's had this ongoing case, um, and shit. I'm just looking at myself like in the viewfinder. And so we at court yesterday. Normally we we get there like a quarter to nine and we're there until like 1130, you know what I'm saying? Before lunchtime, because at 12, they will send your ass outside and you got to come back at 130. They won't send you outside, but you know, it, it's up to you, your discrepancy. So yesterday we just so happened to be there until like a, uh, like 230. So of course we got there and we, you know, at 8.30, we got there on time this time, even though it's no time, you know, you just sign in. But anyway, so by the time I got home, I got Mumsy in time and I had parked my car, not my truck. Cause, um, in case you guys don't know, I have two cars. I have a Malibu 
a Chevy Malibu hatchback, which I absolutely love this car because it's small and it's, it's a Chevy Malibu, but it's not like the normal Chevy Malibu. It's a limited edition. So it's really small, not really, really small, but it's small and it has a little hatchback and I love it. It's just, it's smaller than a regular Malibu, but I absolutely love it. Okay. It's a Chevy Malibu Max. Okay. So I bought that car when I first moved here. It's got a sunroof, a moonroof, a TV, it's got leather seats. I love it. The only issue that I have with it is that because it's so damn hot in here, out here in Arizona, the inside paneling, like the leather on the inside of the doors have been peeling off. So I don't even care. I love the fucking car. Okay. It's great on gas. So I really like to drive that more than I like to drive my Nissan Armada, which is like this huge SUV truck. And I have like, and it makes, I just really don't like to drive that because it's a gas guzzler for one. And because I have 22 inch rims on it, it makes it even more heavier, which is more in the gas. And, you know, I just bought four new tires for it, like right before I left to go to New York. And it's still a little bit shaky when I bring it on the freeway. So I have to get that looked at. So anyway, I really, you know, I really don't drive the truck unless it's all of us and I have to go with everybody in the car. Other than that, I, I just like to drive the Chef, the, the Malibu. So anyway, as I left, the day before I left to go to New York, I bring my Malibu to Miguel. And I'm pretty sure you guys have heard me speak about Miguel. Miguel is like my mechanic. He is, um, he doesn't have his own shop, but he does have his own shop. Like his whole back portion of his house, everything is made into a garage. He wears a little jump shoe. Like he takes this serious and he can work on a car like nobody's business. Okay. Everybody brings their car to Miguel and his prices are fair. So I dropped my ship, my Malibu off because it had to go to emissions to get an inspection. And, you know, it just needed a little things done to it. So he always takes it to emissions for me. I've never, ever been to emissions out here in Arizona as of yet. Because then Miguel will do it for me. So when I got back on a Wednesday, um, Saturday morning, I went to pick it up from him. It was $320, you know, for the emissions and all this good stuff that he had to do. New brakes, um, recharging and fixing of the AC, just a bunch of shit. Like I said, his prices are fair. And I've been dealing with Miguel for like, since I moved here. And I was introduced to, to Miguel from my ex friend, Nicole, who bust my windows last April 30th. Okay. Or April 29th, whatever day you want to call it. So that's how I know Miguel. And um, me and Miguel have just stayed in touch with each other. I only let Miguel touch my car. I don't even know any other mechanics out here. So if you want to know, don't ask me unless you want Miguel's phone number. And he is very trustworthy. So anyway, I go and I pick up my car Saturday. On um, Sunday, you know, I drive it. Because um, Sunday, we actually ended up going. Sunday, we all went to the Odyssey Aquarium in um, wherever that shit is at, in Scottsdale. Now, first of all, it's all of us, me, my son, my three daughters, my grandson, and my mother. This shit is not cheap. It cost me $231 to get in, $231 to get in. That was the cheapest version. Honestly, I wasn't really, like, enthused by it. Like, I could have spent my money better elsewhere, but I'm glad that everybody had a great time. We got in a truck. Later on that evening, I decided to take my mom... Mumsy and Nay to Westgate's Plaza so she could see the lights outside. You know, there was plenty of lights at night. There was live music. There's little shops and eateries. I thought I would take her there so she could just see more of Arizona and get used to it so that way she could move here. I, we took the little car. We took the Malibu. And plus, it's much easier for my mom to get in because she's shorter than me. So she has to, like, hold on to the car, to the truck, to, to the Armada, and, like, really climb in my truck. And she was like, oh, I like this little car. It's much better. I could easily get in. I like it too because it's much faster and I could zip through traffic like nobody business, okay? So like I was saying, Monday, which was yesterday, I had to go to court with my son. And I took my Malibu because, like I said, I really don't like to drive my truck like that too far because it doesn't need an alignment, but... Miguel is thinking that the tires were not balanced properly from the tire shop. So he wants me to drop it off the day before I leave to go back to New York. He wants to check it out. He said he's had this issue with people that have rims on their trucks. So he wanted to check it out for me and see what anything else was wrong with it. because And something was wrong with the AC. So I wanted to get it fixed because it's about to be blazing out here. So anyway, I like driving a little car anyway. So, you know, Monday we go to court, me and my son, and I'm in Malibu. We get home about 3.20, 3.15. 
after we picked up Mumsy. I parked my Malibu in front of my house, and I parked my truck is in my driveway. It's not. I could have put it in the I could put it in a garage, but it's a two car garage. But my truck is so long and high that it really doesn't fit in there. It does, but it just fits. And plus, I got so much shit in there. So when I leave to go to New York, that's when I put it inside of the garage, so nobody doesn't try to do anything. Plus, it keeps my son Wuzzle out of trouble out of my garage because he likes to have his little friends over, and they like. To to puff puff and pass and you're not about to do that when i'm not home you're not about to do that shit so i put my truck in there because then nobody can't get the fuck up in there so anyway on my street i live in garden lakes in avondale it's not a regular street it's not a street at all it's like a community okay if that's what you want to call it a subdivision of houses and it's huge it's garden lakes this is what it is so you're not going to find people driving off the street. You know what I'm saying? It's not traffic like that. It's nowhere traffic like that. So on my little block, you know, my, my car is parked right in front of my motherfucking house. So I'm sitting there. I just came home. I'm waiting for my mom to get ready because we're going to go to Hobby Lobby. She wanted to go to Hobby Lobby. And I was like, okay, we can go to Hobby Lobby. I'm going to go and get me a free Dunkin' Donuts iced coffee plus my free car wash for my truck. So I really didn't have any intentions on taking my Malibu. I wanted to use my free car wash on my truck, okay? Because I just got the Malibu washed when I got it back on Saturday. And I got a free car wash. So I said, I'm going to use it on my truck. So as I'm sitting there and I'm going through this package that I got from Amazon, my neighbors that are on the on the on the right of me ring my doorbell. And I don't really speak to them like that, but I do. Like I'll see them outside and we'll conversate. But they not they've never rang my doorbell. So when the wife rang my doorbell, I thought it was kind of weird. So she rings my doorbell and I'm like, hey, how you doing? What's up, hon? She's like, your car just got hit and the truck. I'm like, when she said my car just got hit and the truck, I was like, hold the fuck up. Is this a joke or did somebody intentionally hit my fucking car and then come in my driveway and hit my truck? Well, so I go outside and she was like, yeah, she tried to drive off. She's right up the street. She lives in the house up the street. So the bitch lives up the house in the street. Okay. And she just rammed into the back of my fucking car. She didn't hit my truck. She hit the truck that was in front of me, which was her son's, my neighbor's son's truck that's been parked there for like over two and a half years and has never moved. Okay. So mind you, when I go outside, I'm just looking at my poor little Malibu. Now she hit it enough to where she messed up the back bumper and she messed up the driver's side tail light, And then she, she pushed it into the truck and into the truck in front so the bumper in front was a little bit messed up but here's the thing did you just drive the fuck off and go in the house so i'm like what as i'm talking to the lady i'm just like i'm holding on to my phone and now mind you i have a case on my phone so anytime i drop it it just lands flat and it never broke well, in my house, in front of my house, my landscaping is not grass. It's all freaking rocks. Why did I drop on the rocks? My whole screen is cracked now. And not only that, if you guys can even see that. Now my screen is cracked. Okay. And on top of that, you see it? On top of that, my fucking car has been hit while it was being parked, okay? So I just spent $320 and 16 getting the car washed, and this bitch driving down the street rams into my motherfucking car. How do you ram into a fucking parked car? So at this point, I'm like, what? I'm on the phone with Tati. She's like, I was your car they hit? Wuzzle, my son is behind me outside. Tati just comes running down the street. We're walking down the street. So I get to the lady house and I see her car is leaking all over the place. Okay. And her hood is smashed up. And I'm like, well, damn, her hood is really fucked up. And my back of my car is not that bad, but it's bad enough that I can't drive that because, um, I ain't got no left signal, but I, I can drive it, but I'm not, I'm not about to drive that around. So Ah, she's in there crying. Her daughter's in there crying because her daughter is the one that hit my car. And the door is open, so I'm ringing the doorbell. I'm just standing there. 
She's like, well, can I help you? I was like, yeah, my car. You just hit my car and ran off. She's like, well, can you come back in a little while? I'll come down there in a little while. I had to look at this lady like, no, I'm not going to fucking come back in a little while. You're going to bring your ass down the street right fucking now. We're going to settle this. She was like, well, I said I'll come down there in a little while. Why did my son, he was like, you're going to come down the fucking street right now and handle this, okay? She ain't trying to hear that shit. I, I just couldn't believe my, I just was like, oh my God, this bitch is going to have me snatch her out of her fucking house. So it's just like, it, there's no moral to the story, but, oh, there is a moral to the story. Don't fucking text and drive, because was this bitch texting and driving? The text message must have been real motherfucking important because you went from being on the middle, in the middle of the street to all the way to the right side of the street and just smashed into my motherfucking car. Like, okay, where do we do this at? All right. Did somebody break up with you in a text message? Did you just win the lotto? Like, what the fuck was that important that you could not focus at all? Like, you had to really, really, really be not paying attention from the time you left your house to the time you crashed into my car. I was so pissed the fuck off. Like, you know, I was I was more so pissed because I just got my car back. And also because I like the car. I love the motherfucking car. So now I have to get it fixed. And what sucks about it is this is another month in a new year, April. This is April. This is April. What is this? April 20. This happened on April 23rd. Last year, my same car got its windows bashed in like April 29th, late, late, late at night. So we say April 30th, the windshield. Is the car like, what the fuck? You know what I'm saying? Like that that Malibu is everything to me. Like seriously, it ain't the newest Malibu in the world, but it get. <sighs> listen, listen, Linda, listen. All I know is this: yesterday was not my day. Okay, my fucking car got hit being parked. My cell phone broke. Okay, because of this car, and then my fucking truck. The stereo came unattached, or not unattached, but I guess I got to go in, underneath the hood and connect it because it's a um, custom stereo system, so it came unhitched, and it's playing the music now, but I think it's either got a short in it or the connecting piece is coming off. Either way, it wasn't my day, and plus I spent from 8.30 in the morning to 2.30 in the morning in court, so it definitely was not my motherfucking day. But I did go to Hobby Lobby still with my mom, and I did still get my free car wash, and I still did get my free McDonald's ice, excuse me, my free Dunkin' Donuts iced coffee, okay? Yes, on Mondays, Dunkin' Donuts gives out free iced coffee. I don't know about the rest of the fucking world, but out here in Arizona, they do, all right? And that's only for two months, every Monday, with a little card that you have to get clicked. But other than that, you know, life is good. I'm happy to be home. I cannot wait to, um, my mom really decides to move here. I can't wait to see my husband, my soon to be husband. Now, in case you guys are like, what's up with the ring? I know you guys were like, not really focused on the real talk last week. Okay. Well, y'all was, but I just didn't want to say anything about it because some things I do like to keep private, you know what I'm saying? So you don't really see pictures, you don't see any pictures of me and my husband or my ex-husband on social media because we don't really see each other like that all the time. He lives in New York and I live here until February. I'm not moving back to New York. He's moving here. But you know, I do go see him like every other month. Um, but um, he has his own apartment. He has a good job and stuff and shit like that. He's not he's not a drinker anymore. So I'm very proud of him. But so yeah. So while I was away, I did um, have a, get a ring put on me. You know, put a ring on it, which I do need to clean right now because I never take it off. But um, so yes, I am engaged, not married. I'm engaged to. Okay. So I'm engaged to my ex-husband. Isn't that funny? Like seriously funny. But the funny thing about it is, um, he gave me the whole set. Like I told him, you're supposed to keep like this part because there's, there's three pieces to it. And I told him he was supposed to keep these pieces and I was only supposed to get this, but he was like, no, I want you to have it all right now. And basically that was about it. So, you know, I've been, 
that's probably why you guys think that we're married married because I have the whole set on, but I really am not married married. Maybe I should just take it off and just wear just the, the one piece. But I I just rather wear it all because that's how he put it on me. So but it, it holds a lot of value to me to me. Um a lot of people have said that, oh, you put your ring back on. It's not actually the same ring. Um it, and that's the reason why I, I like this one because it looks just like my old set that I had and I pawned before I moved to Arizona. Okay, so it's not that set, but it's very close in resemblance to it. So that's why it is um sterling silver because it is identical to my old set. And we got sterling silver because that's what we could afford. Well, it's not even sterling silver, excuse me, it's white gold. But we got that because um we 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 didn't really have like a lot of money back then when we was getting married. So when we first initially got married, we had rings from Kmart and who cares? It's a ring and it means that you love each other. It doesn't have to be anything exclusive or expensive. It all depends on what's in here. So being that um that ring that we had originally got, they kind of got banged up and stuff. We went out, we went to like a jewelry store and it wasn't like an exclusive cave jewels or anything like that. It was something inexpensive, but it was a jewelry store. It was like, you know, your mom and pop beauty supply, not beauty supply store, but mom and pop jewelry store, you know, like when you get the name plates made and shit like that, that's where we went and got our wedding rings from. Um, not this one, but, um, and, and we was, we stayed in our budget and he just really wanted to save up so bad and gave me something like really expensive. This was like a long time ago I'm talking about. And I was like, it doesn't matter. I just, I'm happy to be with you. So I really wanted something that like looked the same as my, my last, my last set. Um, and that's what this is. So this one is actually, this one is actually not white gold. It's sterling silver. Okay. And it just resembles my other set. And it's a little bit different. Like this, th this one has three bands versus the two, but they still kind of resemble each other a lot. So I'm like really excited and happy. I'm very, very happy about that. So yes, you guys, in case you wondering, because y'all was like, oh, the ring. Yes, the ring. Y'all something else to see. But thank you, everybody. People are like, oh, you got that wedding glow, like all that marriage glow. I ain't married, honeys. I'm not married, just engaged. But it's weird to say, I'm engaged to my ex-husband. Listen, he is the love of my life, okay? And I wouldn't trade him in for nothing in this world. Seriously. Like, you know, we all go through some shit in our lives with our spouses or our boyfriends or girlfriends or whatever. And we have to get rid of them at times, which is unfortunate because sometimes we got to just teach them a motherfucking lesson. But I would not trade his ass for nothing in this world because, for real, he is my best friend. And he's always been there for me, even though despite his own issues, he's everything to me. So I love him and I admire him a lot for the things that he has changed in his life. So yes, you guys. So on that note, we're going to get into this real talk. Oh, and I'm in case y'all like, what hair is that girl? This is hair vi vi hair VB. Is that how you say it? I don't know how you say it, but so they sent me this kinky straight wig. It's the 360, 18 inches. I did flat iron it because I didn't really want it too big. And it's a 360. They, they bleach it themselves. It was a little bit brassy. So I'm going to, when I wash it, I'm just going to use some shimmer lights on it. But, you know, it's attached. It's tacked down. The way I tack this bad boy down is with some mousse and some hairspray from um, Pump It Up and some Dollar Tree mousse. Ain't no gel and all of that stuff. That's just doing the most, okay? But I love it. I have been wearing it since I came home from New York. So by the time y'all see this, it'll be a week. And there is a video up on my channel, which was posted up yesterday. Because by the time y'all see this, it'll be yesterday. But it's really be posted up today, Tuesday. But by the time y'all see this, it will be yesterday. But I'm not going to make this too long because I got to get to the post office and send out some wigs. Okay, because I do have some um some some customers who did buy some with me when I came back. And plus um I got some things that I bought and purchased since I've come back. My mom my mom gets me to buy stuff like and I like that. We go shopping and stuff and I don't feel guilty about buying nothing cuz she'll be like that'll look nice. Unlike the kids, my kids be like you don't need it. You don't need it. Not my mom, she doesn't do that to me, which is which is great. 
So anyway, if you guys need a real talk, you can always send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. Make sure to put in the real talk subject line, real talk. And if you want to change the names of your characters in the email, you can go ahead and do so. Let me know that you changed the names and all that goody good good stuff. And yeah, that's about it. Oh yes, guess what? They even have the black elastic band already sewn into the wig cap for you. Is that what's up or not? Like that's that's dope. Okay, you didn't even have to sew that shit in yet. I like, I like hair VB or hair bye bye. I don't know, but I like it. Okay, let's get into this. Huh? 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 What? Huh? Okay, so this is actually an update that I did on Valentine's Day. And in case you guys didn't know, they were two best friends. One of the girls, um, she has um she had met a guy through POF and they moved in together and her other and her best friend started acting shady. Not really shady, but not as close as they used to be. So she would invite her over to her home that she now shared with the POF boyfriend. And the girl really didn't want to come over, but when she would, she would kind of leave, um be, you know, kind of like standoffish to the POF boyfriend. And um, I'm just calling him that so y'all know who I'm talking about. And um she was just basically they felt like they was growing apart and you know she felt like the girl her best friend was kind of like hating on her or jealous because she had a man and she didn't at the time and i just basically told her to talk it out with her so this is just like an update on it and if you guys are interested you can always go back to the valentine's day video and look it up but like I said, they were two best friends. One of the girls, I don't remember what I named them in the video, so I'm just going to name them right now. Her name was April, and the other girl's name was Pam. April had met a guy off of POF, and they began, you know, they started dating, and she um, moved in with the guy from POF. Her best friend, Pam, was kind of like standoffish about the relationship. You know, she didn't come around as much, and April thought that Pam was getting really, really, like, jealous or things like that. So she thought she was acting shady to her, and, and was she acting petty, or was she being petty? So she basically asked for the advice, and I told her, you know, there could be a lot of different reasons why your friend don't like your man or why she don't want to be around. Some people don't like to feel like a third wheel. Maybe you should talk to her about it. What she did in the turnout was much, much better than what she expected. So sometimes when we feel one certain way, we definitely have to think twice before we react because shit can really pop off that doesn't even need to pop off so anyway this is a recap hey diva it's an update you can share or not but i i do want your feedback i was so pumped when i heard you read my real talk on valentine's day i really appreciate your realness and for giving me great advice about my situation so i wanted to give you an update but i wanted to answer your questions first that you asked while reading my story so i was going through a long overdue divorce and i wanted to start mingling i started talking to this guy on and off for about a year and it was a complete waste of time and energy so that's what pushed me into looking into an online dating site so i tried a couple and finally stuck with pof and that's where i found my current boyfriend whom i'm living with now but through all of the bullshit my best friend was with me through the whole process and i'm forever grateful for her but now that i am settled and drama free it seems like we have grown apart a little that's why i wrote the first letter about how distant she was becoming so i took your advice set my pettiness aside and finally talked with my bestie we had a long chit chat about us so apparently she had been going through uh, so apparently she had been going through a lot with her personal health, her home life, and a whole list of other issues, and she felt like she couldn't talk to me anymore because I was in a different place. But I told her regardless of what's going on with me, I'm still here and I still loved her. And since then, we've been taking more, um, we've been talking more, and I also threw her a birthday dinner at my home. She seemed like she really enjoyed herself. I realized that people are here for a reason. Um, or a season or both. I realized that my bestie was here for a reason and a season. And if my bestie and I do grow apart, then it's okay. I'm learning to appreciate whatever life gives me and try to make the best out of my situation. And if no one is going to be truly happy for me and mine, then it's okay. I'm good. I've learned so much from you, April, and I really appreciate you and your realness. You have taught so many of us to take charge and take full responsibility of our own lives. And whoever doesn't agree with anything we do and our growth, then fuck them. 
We are the ones in charge of our own happiness, and that's all that matters. And I just wanted to say thank you, and I love you for that. So on that note, bye. And here's a pic of us. We are lit as fuck. Laugh out loud. So don't judge us. Laugh my ass off. And I attached a pic of me and my gift to her. And you know what's so sweet? That, you know, sometimes, you know, we we kind of like, we, 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 we don't show a person how appreciative we are until, you know, it's too late or sometimes we've grown apart. But I'm glad that she was able to make up with her best friend because had she gone off and been petty, she would have looked like a jackass. You know what I'm saying? So like, you know, I've learned this, like, and I've learned this from like my mom and my husband. Like sometimes we can't just argue with people all the time. We have to walk away, even if it's our own family members. Sometimes as bad as we want to confront somebody and, and, and argue with them, sometimes we just have to be the bigger person and walk away because for one, you don't know what that person can be going through, you know? So it's always best to sometimes just let things die down and settle down. And yeah, sometimes they may make you feel like a punk or a bitch because I'd be feeling like that if I don't say nothing sometimes. But we have to feel like this. Listen, be the bigger person. Sometimes we have to be the more mature one. We can't always be arguing with people all the time because you know what? It's not going to make anything, any situation better. So sometimes we just have to step back and step out of our own shoes and just step back and just let shit die down and just, you know, fix its own self. And I'm really happy that she was able to just chit chat with her friend and see what was wrong because like she didn't even know she had health issues. She had home life issues. And you know, a lot of times, people go through shit and they don't want to involve involve other people they don't want to be a burden so they kind of like keep shit to themselves and i get that you know what i'm saying their people are like that and they just don't want to involve others because sometimes these people that they want to involve but they don't want to are in a place where they're happy so i'm glad that they are able to become friends and, and stay or remain friends rather and just get closer and find out what the root of the whole problem was you know what I'm saying? Because has she gone off on a bitch? Then it would have been like, dang, bitch, you just got popped off. And, you know, that kind of like brings it back to me. Like, you know, I, I'm i glad that me and my bestie, Rebecca, are friends again. Are, we were always friends, but we hadn't spoke to each other in a few months. And I know you guys remember the reason why I told you is because the way she had me sitting around here waiting and I, and I stopped everything and she, you know, just kind of like dissed me. Well, I spoke to her a couple of weeks ago. She texted me and we spoke verbally and we resolved our issues. She was going through something that I wasn't aware of. You know what I'm saying? She didn't even want to be doing the shit that she was doing while she was here. She wanted to be with me. And it's more or less like she was forced to. So I'm glad that I didn't go off on her and I just kind of let it die down because I love Rebecca to death, like to pieces. And she's my best friend. And I miss her so much. And I always say that to Tati, like, I miss her. I miss her. I'm going to call her and see what's going on. So I'm glad that we rekindled our friendship. And, you know, I know that there's some people that watch this. It's like, well, what about you and Love Kisses or Robin? I feel the same way about her too. And I guess I got to just grow some balls and just chalk it up and call her and just see like whatever happened to our friendship. Because even though I may feel like she would have been, she was being shady on social media, it might not have even been intended towards me. You know what I'm saying? We have to sometimes look at the other side of the window and think like, you know what? Stop taking it personal all the time because life is short. People are putting your lives for reasons. Don't just throw them away. You know what I'm saying? And <clears throat> For me, I sometimes feel like, oh, I'm the toughest person there is, but I'm really not. I'm a very emotional person and a sensitive person, but sometimes I get in my ways and my stubbornness like, um, yeah, well, call my bluff if you want to, bitch, because I can be like that. There are two sides to me. You know what I'm saying? I'm a really sensitive and emotional person, and I'm very giving and loving, and I can be a wonderful person to you. However, if you strike me the wrong motherfucking way, bitch, you best to watch your motherfucking neck or your head before that shit get cracked the motherfucking open. But um, when I have a friend, I love them to pieces and anybody that's part of my life. So it does bother me that um, I don't speak to her because I love her just as much. And, you know, I'm going to get to the root of the problem sooner or later, sooner than later. Okay. 
So I'm 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 happy for these two young ladies because that's all I want to see is everybody grow and be happy. You know what I'm saying? And true indeed, like we don't supposed to take other people's shit, but we don't have to give shit neither. Sometimes we just got to be the bigger person and walk away from the drama and the bullshit. Like I said, y'all might feel like a bitch or a punk, but sometimes walking away makes life so much easier. Trust me when I tell you, it does. Nobody don't want to end up in jail. I know I don't. For real. So let's move on to the next real talk, okay? What is this sending you? Um, I don't need no flowers, pro flowers. They sent me some crappy ass flowers for my mom's birthday. Sure. Sure. What is this sending you? Okay. Hi, Miss April. Love your real talk conversations. And I decided my turn to send a letter. I have changed all the names in this as well as all involved. I am Lilia. Lilla. I have been married for 17 years and my husband, Mo, is seven years older than me. We met when I was 20 years old. We got together when I was 21 and we got married a year later when I was 22. We had a lot of sadness in common and basically bonded over that. We were hurt in our childhood, abuse, abused as children, and both in our early 20s, struggled to come to grips with it and transitioned into adulthood. He offered me support in a way out of my family, and I moved in with him and his elderly mom. He was loving. We had a lot of laughs, and I fell in love with him. I was happy, and I was happy for a while. I am a fighter. I am the type that even in my weakest moment, it is hard to take help. But when I do, I learn something about myself and I use it to get stronger and move up from it. I immediately got two jobs to support myself and to contribute. He was a hardworking man who used to work 16 hour shifts to contribute as well. After we got married a few years later, his mother went down south to live with her sister and eventually went to a home into a home down there. She is not really the problem. He loves her and stays in touch often. Anyway, the problem is him. I healed over my emotional problems. I worked hard. I moved to corp to corporate America, and he was a supervisor on his job as well. But he got a DUI, lost his ability to drive, and soon after got into a really bad accident on his job. It was not alcohol related, but he was disabled from the accident. His job went bankrupt also, like an Enron situation. The big wigs took the money and ran, and he got nothing. Alcohol was a real issue for him after that, and his disability caused him great physical and emotional pain. I was in my corporate job for many years. Then I started working for myself and went back to school and graduated my first um, college with my first college degree. And I'm soon going back for my bachelor's and something else as well. I've got dreams and I have to express it to him, excited about my future. And he gives me every negative scenario in the book when I'm expressing to him my happiness. It is not encouraging. It is disappointing. But he celebrated more than me on my graduation day. I bet you I know how. He kept beaming and calling me his educated woman and told me a million times how proud he was of me. The problem is he is stuck. He is stuck in grief. He is stuck in the same childhood traumas. He is stuck in his disability, in his health, and his health is failing him, and he is also now impotent. He drinks way too much, but even sober for long periods of time, it still does not work, by the way talking about his dick don't work even if he is sober. Part of this is my fault. Though I am not an alcoholic, I have drank more than I should with him. Yes, I have abused alcohol, self-medicating and stress, etc. And I got tired of it and I stopped that to focus on school. And now he is really going to the opposite direction, getting worse. I love him, but I love myself. We have to, been together for so many years, and I don't want it to end this way, but it looks like for me to succeed, I need to let him go. Staying with him, I find myself stuck. 
For example, when he left and went to see his mother before his aunt died years ago, but before things got really bad, that he can't travel anymore. I will got I I would got I would I would got clearer. I would have got more done. I would be happier, and I would have missed him. I felt disappointed to see him come back. Damn. I have health issues like I am too fat and I want to completely change my life. I have lost 80 pounds but have so, so much more to go. And I don't think I will ever get this thing in this stress. I tell him I want us to do better and I need to get where I want to be. He knows I am not happy. He knows he needs help, but he said he won't do it, AA, unless he has a private counselor. He won't do any group. He has a fear of speaking in public. He has many fears but his insurance won't pay for private help. I am tired. He has an excuse for everything. When my mode of operation is to find another way and do it, he has an excuse. I didn't get scholarships or financial aid. I paid for school myself, still paying for school every month. I am a fighter, but I am kind of all fought out. I told my friend I want to leave him, and she said, well, all truth, do you think he will even survive long enough without you? She is right. I am the reason he has made it this far. He can't even work. He does get disability. My lease is up in four months. Even though he has stood in my corner when I was young and in trouble, should I leave this man now? If I tell him the plan, he is going to make it harder for me to go like he has in the past. But if I keep it a secret, he is out on his butt with nowhere to go and all of his health issues. He cannot pay this heavy rent by himself. He can't even afford a studio apartment where we live. We put our pennies together out here. He will be in real trouble. His mother is in a home. His best friend died. His mother's, his mom's sister has passed away as well. All he has is me. Thank you for listening. Glad to talk to you. Very truly, I hope I hear from you very soon. Sincerely, Lilla. Well, you know something, Lilla? Her story kind of seems and sounded like April's story. When I say April's story, I'm talking about me, okay? Same situation, long time ago. You know, she's with this man that she's been with since she's 20. He's seven years younger than, older than her, excuse me. My ex-husband isn't older than me, but it's kind of the same thing, you know? He's my husband isn't disabled, but he started drinking and that kind of like brought us downhill. And I just wanted to move forward. I wanted to leave the state of Schenectady. I wanted to move forward. I wanted to better my life. And he just was dragging me down because of his drinking and it was just making my life worse. And as much as I loved him and I never wanted to be without him, I had to. I had to leave. And this is what I did. And because I left, life has gotten a lot better for myself and as well as for him. And he has changed. And it's unfortunate, but Lilla, you may be the only thing that he has right now, but you will not be the only thing that he has, meaning he has himself. He is going to have no choice but to get it together if you decide to leave him. You can't let another person hinder you from doing what you need to do physically, financially and mentally like seriously on some real shit like you got this man holding you back from your dreams and aspirations and i'm sorry but i wouldn't want to be around a drunk all motherfucking day long because that shit is annoying they're fucking annoying as fuck okay and then the part where you said that you blame yourself for his drink because you drank with him you can't blame that on nobody but him that's him he you didn't put a gun to his head and say nigga you better drink this shit while i fucking shoot you if you don't drink this shit i'm gonna fucking pop your head off you didn't put a gun to his head and force him to drink. He drank because he's grown and that's what the fuck you want to do. When you grown and you do something, it's because you want to do it. Not because somebody told you and forced you. It's because you want to do the shit, okay? If you get up and go to work in the morning, that's because you want to do it. Ain't nobody putting a gun to your head and telling you you better take your bitch ass to work. It's because you want to do it because you want to have nice things and you want to have somewhere to live. Same thing goes with him. He wanted the motherfucking drinks and that's why he drank. So you can't blame that shit on yourself because you sat there and drank with him. Nobody put a gun to your head just like nobody put a gun to his head. You stopped drinking, he didn't. Okay? There we go. So let's not take the blame for shit. And I hate when people do that. Like, they're always trying to make up in the blame or excuse for somebody else. No, bitch. It's what the fuck he wanted to do because he wanted to have a motherfucking drink. Not because of you. You could have drank there until you was a fucking um fish in water. You know what I'm saying? You know, you drank till you a fish. Fish, drink it up. Drink it the motherfucking up. 
He didn't have to drink with you. You didn't have to drink with him. He drank because he fucking wanted to drink. And you drank because you wanted to drink. You quit because you wanted to quit. This nigga still drinking because he wanted to drink. This is one thing that I don't like that people do. And I used to, st- I used, that's the reason why I stopped watching these fucking Maury Povich shows and shit. When people get on there and they be like, oh, the reason why I am the way I am is because you left me as a kid or you abused me. I get it. You were traumatized. You were beaten as a kid. Your mother left you. She was a crackhead. Whatever. I get that. But some things in life we cannot hold. We we now 40 years old. This shit happened to you when you was like five. 35 years later, you still holding on to that shit? Like, listen, get over it. And I'm not trying to seem insensitive, but get over that shit. It's the past. Move the fuck forward and better yourself. This shit that happened to you should make your life much better. This shit should make you want to strive and have more in life. Not hinder you to fuck down and not want to do shit. Because that makes no sense to me. Why the fuck... Um, You or anybody would want to just sit there and let some childhood trauma hinder them. I understand. I get it. People go through all type of things in life where they have been fucked up emotionally, physically, and mentally. However, as long as you allow that shit to hinder you, then you're not going to get nowhere. And you cannot keep constantly blaming that old shit for the shit that you have been through. And that's why you are the way you are today. If that's the case, then hmm, let's see. What would I say? Okay, my father left my mom when she was when I was like what two. He cheated on my mom, and and that's why I am the way I am today. I never I I didn't grow up with my father. You think I'm gonna allow that to hinder me for the rest of my fucking life? That's like me getting on one of them talk shows and being like, the reason why I am and I'm evil and I'm a bitch is because of you, Dad. You weren't in my life. I know I'm 43 years old, but. Get over the shit, okay? Especially if you're in your, your late ages. Get the fuck over shit. Like, people always use some shit as an excuse. I get it. We all go through shit. Like I said, I'm not being fucking insensitive. But, you know something? <sighs> Bitches, motherfucking niggas. Grow up, get some balls, and get over the shit. You can't constantly say, well, he drinks because he had trauma in his life or because he was in an accident. Okay, you know what? Your man is disabled now. He don't have to be disabled for the rest of his motherfucking life. So now what's he going to do? Drink himself into a motherfucking coma? Okay, so you're disabled. There are a lot of disabled people in the world who work and get around and do a whole bunch of shit. They don't sit and cry and wallow in the pity and the pain and drink their lives away to where they ain't got no motherfucking liver. And then they got another issue. That's not what you do. You get up off your ass. Okay, you cry about it for a while. You cry. You do cry about that shit for a minute, a while, okay? But let's not cry about it for the rest of our life. Let's not go around kicking ourselves in the ass for the rest of our life because we done fell, we got into accident or whatever. We grow up, we grow some motherfucking kahunas, and we get up off our asses, and we become an adult, and we move forward, okay? That's just like with me. Okay, yeah, I was always saying how my husband was an alcoholic or he was drinking and I was, well, I wasn't always saying that to you guys, but I was saying it to my friend and I was tired of it. And you know what? I eventually got motherfucking real tired of it. And what did I do? I got up off my motherfucking ass. Okay. And I moved forward. I moved way forward to the other side of the motherfucking country, to the fucking West Coast, okay? That's what I fucking did. And you know something? It has made my life so much more pleasant and better. Now, yeah, I do miss him, and I'm glad that we back together, but I'm going to tell you what. I'm not about to let no motherfucking body hinder me down and let me stop me from doing what the fuck I want to do. Bitch, if you want to continue your education and get a bachelor's degree, then go ahead and do that. If this motherfucker is making you unhappy, bitch, leave his ass the fuck alone. He is going to hinder you and weigh you the fuck down. Sometimes you got to leave a motherfucker in order for them to see reality. As long as you stay in the goddamn picture, this nigga ain't going to do shit but hinder you down and um feel like you owe him something because he did what? He took you in when you was in your 20s. So fucking what? You don't owe him your life, okay? Y'all, it's how old now? So he took you in and you lived with him and his mama. Okay, big deal. But y'all is adults, okay? And you have grown and he has not. 
Just because he took your fucking ass in does not mean that you got to stay with him for dear life. I wouldn't give a fuck if I was homeless and a motherfucker took me in and then they didn't do anything else but just feed me negative shit. I'm going to leave you the fuck alone after I get on my feet and shit. You know what I'm saying? Like if I was homeless and the motherfucker took me in and got me on my feet and got me put together and shit and then they started fucking badgering me, I'm leaving you the fuck alone. Just because you got me on my feet don't mean I got to stay with you. Nigga, I'm on my feet now. Goodbye. Like, bye, Felicia. Let me tell you something. Just like I said, your story sounds just like April's. Because as long as I was around my husband, he was always like, oh, I don't want to go to no AA. He didn't want to do the same thing neither. He didn't want to do none of that shit, okay? He felt like he could do this shit on his own. And it didn't fucking work, all right? And I gave him that opportunity on many different times. But after a while, I got real tired of it. And you know what I did? I motherfucking left. Seems like well, sometimes we have to leave motherfuckers alone because they just don't believe it could happen to them. They just really don't think they'll call, fucking call your bluff. Like, like I've say it all the time. Call my bluff if you want to. I wish you motherfucking would. I would love for people to call my bluff because I will prove you wrong in a heartbeat. Okay? Seriously. With no problem. You will have to leave him alone because as long as you there and you get you self-medicating him by being there, he ain't gonna change, sweetheart. He ain't gonna have no fucking excuse but to do what he fucking needs to do when you leave his ass alone. And I know it's maybe it seemed heartless to some people. Well, he's disabled. You're gonna leave him He's a fucking disabled drunk. Bye. Like, I give a fuck if he's disabled and drunk. It's one thing to be disabled, but you a disabled alcoholic? Girl, please. Being around an alcoholic is the worst thing in the world because, especially if you don't drink like that, they're annoying to the fucking utmost, okay? To the fifth power. And I'm sorry, but I'm not going to blame myself for anybody's alcoholism that's just like me blaming myself for my husband drinking not not about to happen because for one i don't drink like that and for two i if i did that's still not my motherfucking problem that you were an alcoholic or were an alcoholic or is still you know what i'm saying in her case like that's not my problem that's your problem seems like you have a personal issue not me okay like on some real shit seems like you have a personal issue sweetheart lilla what you need to do is grow some kahuna, sweetheart, boo-boo. Get your shit together because your lease is about to be up and get it popping. Now, you you said if he if you um if you tell him he's just gonna make it harder for you to leave, and if you don't tell him that he's gonna be out on his ass. Listen, let me tell you something. He ain't gonna make nothing no harder than you allow him to. The common courtesy thing to do is to let him know when the lease is up, I'm leaving. Okay? That's being a woman and having common decency. Now, if you was just up and leave, then of course he would be homeless probably. And that's kind of fucked up. However, you're saying if you tell him that you're leaving, he's going to make it hard for you to leave. No, bitch, he's not. Really, he's not. As long as you don't allow him to. Let me tell you something. If he's disabled, that means that he can't get around. I wish he would. I'd knock your disabled ass the fuck out if you try to make it hard for me to leave. I'm sorry. I know that probably seemed heartless too. But if you in a wheelchair and you try not to let me leave, nigga, I will push your ass down the fucking hill, okay? I will push you onto the other side of the room either way, but I'm not going to allow you to hold me captive somewhere that I don't want to be, either in an apartment, a house, or in a relationship. If you don't want to be with somebody because they're hindering you, then you don't want to be with them. And that's the right state of mind. Let me tell you something, Lilla. You're allowing this because the, you feel pity for him and you feel like you owe him something because he didn't what? Took you in. So fucking what, bitch? The shelter could take you and you feel like you owe them something, okay? I could take you and you feel like you owe me something. Not saying that don't come knocking on my motherfucking door, but I'm just saying, you don't owe him nothing but a thank you and to keep it pushing. You have dealt with him all these years and you have tried and you have tried to encourage this man. And let me tell you something. You cannot force a person to do what they fucking don't want to do. They are going to do it on their own time and when they're ready to. Understand what I'm saying? When he is ready to quit drinking and better himself, then he will. Okay? And until then, sweetheart, worry about you. You cannot hold somebody's hand forever. He doesn't want to stop drinking right now. He's he's living a good life. He's partying. Like, I mean, listen, this is his time to be faded, not yours. He don't want to stop drinking. You want him to stop drinking. 
And I'm not saying that's a bad thing. However, he's not your responsibility. He's not your child. And what you need to do is think about Lilla and where she wants to be at in life. You've got yourself a corporate job. You work hard. You've went to school. Now, don't let anybody, I don't give a fuck if it was man, cat, dog, whale, fish, whatever. Don't let anyone take away from what you have worked so hard to gain. I don't care. Makes me know never mind. Unfortunately, he's going to realize in the long run that he's going to have to stand firm and stand strong and get it together. And that's what a lot of people do. As long as we hinder somebody, and um, we like, you know what I'm saying? We, 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 we allow the person to, like, you know, as long as we, like baby a person or just constantly be there for them and they're not doing nothing for themselves they're not gonna get it you understand what i'm saying like seriously like she's there for him 24 7 all the time even if she's not there physically he knows that if he just picks up a phone call she's probably gonna come running which is unfortunate you know but as long as she allows this and she keeps doing this he's not gonna do anything for himself but just be like a burden to you and he's a burden right now and that's unfortunate but he's a burden me personally, I honestly would just walk away and leave. Like, do you think I really wanted to do that to my husband? No, but he wasn't making anything better for himself. He wasn't making matters better for me or our kids. So what was I supposed to do? Sit around and wait for you to do that? God knows when that would have came. Life is short. I'm not about to sit around waiting for you to change the fuck up. If you want to change, then go ahead. But I'm going to be out and I'm going to do this on my own. You know what I'm saying? And that's what we have to do. As much as you love somebody, if you love them, you will leave them and let them go. And if it's really true love and it's meant to be, then they will come back to you and look at look at me. So as much as you love him, Lilla, let him go. He has to be a man. He's a man. Let him be a man and grow some kahunas. Grow some motherfucking balls, okay? Let that nigga grow some motherfucking balls and be on his own. I guarantee you, he'll survive. It happens to the best of us. You put a kid out there in the street that, and like a teenager and kick them out. They'll survive. You'll be amazed. Don't nobody want to be in a predicament where they can't survive and they just give in. Nobody gives in. Okay? Nobody gives in. All right? Straight up. And stop blaming yourself for his drinking. Like, that's weak. That right there is real fucking weak. So, you guys, I know I said that I was going to make this short because I do need to get to the post office, okay? And I do want to spend some time with my mom. So, I'm going to go right now. I hope you guys enjoyed this really quick real talk. Don't be coming at me in the comments talking about, oh, it's t-shirt, blah, 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 Because I get it. Yes, I get it. Well, I got to pay my post office bill, too. So, you guys, I love you all so, so, so much. Make sure you check out my hair, VV hair, bye-bye video. Okay, hunties, check it out. Leave some comments below for Lila. Let her know what she should do. You know what I'm saying? Oh, uh, yeah. And wish me luck for my car because, you know, I'm really, really not happy about that. I told you guys before, I feel like I got like this big fucking sign on my head that says, fuck with me. Like, it's just bad luck. Like, oh, it's just Huh? 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 What? Damn. 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 Dam